Mr. Ivy know the show must go on. If far Cincinnati, man, I put on. Tunes made another flame beat for me to cook on. Raised arms, close fist, yeah, too strong. Team NI, chop it up at the chop shop. Top notch with the king flow, the hot shot. Cop squats it, listen to the real. Jumping like hopscotch, nobody harder than, oh, no, think not. Not only citywide. But nationwide, superlative, keep it locked like them Haitian guys. Put the truth in the airwaves, we talk about it. Brand new like the tip plates, let's be about it. Who got the info by the AM? Trying to be the rapper, got them jamming when they play him. Staying in my lane, they ain't got to okay him. Who the host with the scoop? Yeah, they gon' say him. Ivy, so superlative like a bag of drippos. Show you where the bricks at, Cincinnati Red Tag. One time where my people at. Team and I, where my people at? It's the 513, yeah, you know the flow. What's the word, Nate? Let them know the show. One time, where my people at? Team and I, where my people at? My people at. Good morning, my friends. The dawn of a brand new day. My apologies for my lateness, but I am here. Nathan Ivy with you live, local and vocal. Had a minor tech difficulty as I was getting onto the air that uh, delayed my progress since starting the show, but I'm with you now. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to catch up with Liz Rogers. Liz Rogers is a black female entrepreneur who made news and history. Uh, I think it was the first black owned restaurant on the banks. And she is on to talk about a brand new endeavor. Matter of fact, she got some folks, I think, that work with her. Her chef, I believe, will be in the house as well. Talk about that. It's coming up at about 8.30 a.m. this morning. And Liz, I believe, is, I think she said she's in Vegas. She's not out in Cincinnati, but she's going to try to join us and chime in and call into the show as well this morning. Hey, good morning to you. If you want to show your thoughts, 513-873-7134. Good morning to you. Yeah, let's talk about Black Biz. You know, this is Black Restaurant Week. If you don't know it, in Cincinnati. It was uh, J. Raj, among others, and the young professionals, young urban league professionals put it together. And they're trying to highlight African-American-owned restaurants uh, for this week. Should be all the time, but for this week. Good morning. How many people got a chance to check out the Cutting Through the BS podcast hosted by Fast Pitch and Crew Magic last night? If you haven't, go over to CIN Digital, Cincinnati Digital Media, and check out the live stream. The audio will be up soon. Good morning to you. What is on your mind? It's a beautiful Thursday, and uh, it is my pleasure to be with you. Good morning. Yeah. Opponents say the proposed TIF districts would hurt Cincinnati public schools. What? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. What? The local TIF districts would hurt Cincinnati public schools. We'll get into it. We must discuss. Good morning. And I see that Alicia Reese is getting a lot of endorsements. I'm seeing her latest endorsement is from former Mayor Mark Mallory. Yeah, I saw there was a big press conference recently and a lot, she's got a lot of support in what appears to be the black community here in the city of Cincinnati. She is running for Hamilton County Commissioner. It's going to be interesting. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I want to know. What's up with Connie Pillage? Where's she at? 
Did you watch the debate last night? Uh, shout out to Des- Jesse. Appreciate the share and the like. Uh, good morning to you, Carolyn. Appreciate it. Did you watch the debate last night? If so, what are your impressions? Did you watch the big? Oh, they said this was like the worst day ever for Trump yesterday. And it seems like the excuses for Trump or the explanations are running out. Seems like it's running out. We shall see. I'll say I'm less into the whole impeachment thing, and I'm more into the whole um, uh, call and call me back. I'll put you straight on. Matter of fact, I was connecting you. I'm more into the whole elect them out kind of thing. I think that should be the way to go. Did you watch? What do you think? What do you think? Good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome. Come on in. Every every seat is a front row seat to the Nathan Ivy show. We'll be chopping it up as the show continues uh, this morning. Broadcasting live from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. How was your last 24 hours? What went down? Yeah, how are you? And here it is. African-American clergy and leaders endorse Alicia Reese for Hamilton County Commissioner. I was not at the press conference, and uh, I see uh, Casey Smith. Who else do I see? I see some other folks here who I kind of recognize. And they are all getting behind. Oh, I see Sister Iris. And uh, who else do I recognize here? Uh, And others. Uh, Brother Joe Mallory, all... uh, And others, I'm sure who those brothers are, all good people, I'm sure. They're all uh, endorsing Alicia Reese. Uh-uh. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in Democrat primary. It's going to happen. What's going to happen? Uh, let's talk about it. 513-873-7134. If you would like to share your thoughts this morning, this is the Nathan Ivey Show live, local, and vocal. Now, this is a daily digital show, if you don't know. We go live from Cincinnati uh, weekdays at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Sometimes we go longer. We chop it up. We talk about local issues from the African-American perspective or from the perspective of this African-American, a lifelong Cincinnatian. This is a no crybaby bingle zone. Don't call in here crying about the damn bingles. Call somebody else with that. But if you want to chop it up, if you want to challenge the prevailing wisdom, the the prevailing thoughts in this city, the incestuous thoughts in this city, everybody thinks the same. Uh, this is the place for you. If uh, you're an intelligent person that likes to hear uh, intelligent thoughts or flows about the current events, if you're down for some, some criticisms and some witticisms, you're in the right spot. You're in the right spot. If you're not down for that, this is not the right spot. This is not the right spot at all. You don't want to be here. Now, I invite you, if you're a first-time listener, to join the Chop Shop. To join the Chop Shop. Okay? Yeah, you are more than welcome to join the Chop Shop. You can do so. That's our chat room. Simply by pressing wherever you're listening right now. Like, if you're on TuneIn, that's a whole different app. If you're on TuneIn and you want to enjoy the Chop Shop, well, you'll have to go over to Spreaker. And you have to join the chat room that Spreaker allows us uh, to have. There's a lot of really wonderful people in here. There's a lot of, there's there's at least one conceited bastard. We know that. And, um, but a lot of good people, a lot of folks who live and or give a damn about what's happening in the greater Cincinnati area and beyond and beyond. But you are more than welcome to, to enjoy whatever the hell that means. (laughs) It means, uh, from my perspective, that you'll have some good conversation and that, um, what in the hell? I, I don't want to see that. People just put anything on on uh, Facebook these days. I just saw something I definitely don't want to see. Okay, I see she ready. What? What's she ready for? What is she ready for? I see you, Renee. What? I don't know what's going on, but it looks good. Have you seen these images of human trafficking hotspots? And it seems like there's a high concentration around Ohio. Now, why would there be a high concentration of human trafficking going on in Ohio? Why would that be? Why would that be? Tell me why that would be. 513-873-7134 if you would like to share your thoughts. Again, 
Uh, coming up, I'm scheduled to speak with Liz Rogers. Liz Rogers is a black female entrepreneur, restaurateur, uh, owner of the Mahogany's restaurant that was down on the banks that people made a big deal about. Yeah, she's going to come on and talk about a brand new endeavor that she's working on right now. And as a matter of fact, we're going to have, I think, some people that are working here. Her chef is going to come in and talk about it for a little bit. I'm over at the uh, West Side office space. And uh, that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Be, it'll be interesting to clue in with her. Great to catch. It'll be great to catch up with her. Bulk Hogan writes, good morning, Nathan. Ask Lizzo Rogers, what does she learn about being thirsty? I don't know who that is. You're trying to be funny. <laughs> I don't know who the hell that is. Lizzo Rogers. You are wrong for that. See? I mean, here you go attacking another black woman. She can't even get on the air before you start attacking her. She can't get on the air. So just ease up. I know that, you know, you hear about a black woman trying to do her thing and automatically you get in your feelings, Fane, or Bulk Hogan, whatever the hell you calling yourself this morning, Bulk Hogan. I know, I know, I know. You just got to let us know that you're a chauvinist. I get it. Uh, But chill, chill, man. Relax, relax. Everything will be okay. Relax, relax. So I'll be great to uh, catch up with Liz Rogers. Sharp Rice, great, great rising is Nathan and the Choppers. Miss Tiffany Rice, good morning. Tracy Rice, hi. CG Dubs in the house, she writes, good morning, Choppers. Tanika Rice, good morning, Nathan and the Choppers. Uh, Jerica Rice, hola, beautiful black people, and the others too. She got it all in this morning. Charles Rice, good morning, everyone. CG Dub Rice, please ask Mrs. Rogers what happened or is happening with the food truck. Sharp writes, TIF districts equals displacements. Um, example, Madisonville. CG Dub writes, that endorsement from Mark Mallory, um, and she has like the number two and then thumbs down, two thumbs down, she says. <laughs> Damn, two thumbs down. I'm slow. Ashley writes, good morning, Nathan and the Choppers. Drops in the house, he writes, good morning, Choppers. Let the games begin. Mason Muller writes, uh, morning, Nathan the Choppers. You already know truth is the truth, right? I'm sure Drop will call in or try to convince us that yesterday was a great day for Donald Trump. Oh, Nate, did you see it? It was great. It was great for Trump. No, it was not great for Trump. It's very bad and terrible for Trump, actually. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Thuggin writes, what's up with the white bird trying to take out Charles Barkley? Don't know what you're talking about. Kelly Presley, Kelly Presley writes, good morning. Hey, good to see you, Kelly. Mike Davis writes, rise and shine, young stars. Hey, good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. I have no idea what you're talking about. None whatsoever. Mike Jones writes, good morning, Choppers. Hey, good to see you, Mike Jones. Pat writes, good morning. Sister Iris is in the house. She writes, good morning, great people. And there it is. If you want to chime in, you can join the chop shop. The, the, the chop shop. I was going to say the chat shop, but that's not really it. It's the chop shop. It is a chat room, but we call it the chop shop. People are still uh, debating the significance of Colin uh, Kaepernick. There is no significance. There's no significance whatsoever. Nothing. It means nothing. If you got a gap, if you got a job as a quarterback, it means nothing. Puts no more money in your pocket, no more control, nothing whatsoever. But people will enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> uh, how are you? It is beautiful outside. I don't care what they say about the weather. It's beautiful outside. Uh-oh, what am I seeing here? Okay. What? All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Whoa. It's a little too much there. A little too much. Did you watch any of the debates last night? If you did not, uh, I've got some highlights for you that will catch you up to speed in which uh, what people will be talking about. It doesn't mean that they are all of the most pressing moments, uh, but it will give you some insights as to what's going on. What is this? Uh, Democrat prosecutor candidate opposes death penalty. That's George Soros like activism, says Joe Dieters. What? George Soros like activism? Wait. Hey. And, of course, we got a chance to speak with Brother Fanar Rucker many weeks ago after he first announced it. And uh, I will be reaching out to Gabe Davis's camp again. I know they are willing to come on. 
Uh, I just think all of this democracy is going to be great. I love it. It's going to be great. But listen, let me take a quick break. As I said, we got guests coming on. I want to reach out to make sure we can get Liz on this morning and uh, get our guest on so we can have the conversation. And uh, thank you for being here. This is the Nathan Ivey Show. I'm live, local, and vocal, NathanIvey.com. And, of course, we're part of Sin Digital, or produced by Sin Digital Media, a new urban voice in the city of Cincinnati. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. to smart financial decisions brought to you by feedthepig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up, just like that. Giving up on what? I'm getting an inheritance from a distant relative. Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd know about it by now? Listen to me, we are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening yachts, having a butler using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right, which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget, get out of debt, set some retirement goals. Budgets? Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. People are always talking about the stock market. Always looking to invest in a good opportunity. Something with the potential to grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids. Like a stock. Not the kind of stock where you invest to make money, but a stock for a social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps students like me go to college, which ends up making the future better for everybody. I could be the first college graduate in my family, the first district attorney from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there will be a second and a third. This can really be the start of something. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org.
All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Nathan Ivy with you. We got some guests in studio. Sorry about that. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty. But like I said, we got Liz Rogers on the line. Let me make sure Liz is on the line here and she can hear us. Uh, hey, Liz, are you there? Hey, how are you, Nathan? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. We got some headphones right there so somebody can uh, listen in there. There it is. Hey, Liz, we got the crew in the house here. And I'm going to ask okay. you. Yeah, we got Liz Rogers on the line, everybody. And uh, I'm going to give them the microphone so they can introduce themselves. And then you can introduce the, the guests you have on your line as well. And then we can get started. Right. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Jeff Anthony Burrell, uh, along with some of my uh, Dallas teammates. Uh, we have Chef Sean Darby. Chef Charles Graham. Yeah, uh, Chef Sean Derby. Hey, you guys are working with Liz? We are. Yeah, and uh, we also have our uh, investor, Brian Robinson, from Dallas, Texas. Hey, how you doing, Brian? Hey, how you doing? Doing great, doing great. So, Liz, listen, you know, I'm very familiar with you over the years. I'm very familiar with the work that you do. Uh, I think there's a lot of people in the audience who remember you, who you are, and remember Hot Mahogany's. We know that you are a serial entrepreneur. What's going on? What's new? How have you been? So I've been pretty good. Uh, just uh, getting back in the grind and just never stop working. We have a lot of amazing things uh, going on. And uh, just in the spirit of entrepreneurship, just met some really amazing entrepreneurs, uh, three of them that are sitting right there uh, with you this morning, which I really appreciate these guys a whole lot. And my childhood friend, Brian Robinson, who is uh, one of our investors, we have a group of investors, um, our other partners own hotels and other things across the country. So because of the Mahogany's brand and because of what we were able to do, good, bad, and indifferent, uh, we were able to really attract some people that really believed in us as entrepreneurs and our brand and just everything that we've, we've actually done. So we, we're doing some really good things. and. We're definitely looking for other entrepreneurs to invest in. Um, just did things a little bit differently this time. Uh, just investing in other people's dreams. Um, I felt like that was the most fulfilling thing for me to do uh, on this journey because it's really not about the destination. It's always about the journey for me. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring the uh, chefs in this morning just to you know, just tell you guys a little bit about what we're doing and what uh, Uptown Talus Brands was able to do um, with with their endeavors as well. And uh, let you guys speak with uh, Brian a little bit um, about his background and some of the things that we'll be doing in the community uh, in the up and coming months. OK, so look, so baby step this for me. Walk me through this. So I keep hearing you use the term Uptown. What is that now? Uptown what? Uptown okay, Palace? So, Talents. Um Yes. Oh, Uptown, so Talents. Uptown Talents. Okay, okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's our company. Um, Talents. Talents. Okay, is, sorry. Yes. We actually uh, do a lot. It, it has several brands uh, from Chef Burrell's uh, partnership with us with Anytime Chef. Uh, we also have some food trucks. Uh, Sean Derby has uh, Triple J's uh, Barbecue. And then we also have a Taste of Talus food truck that's going to be coming up with Chef Charles there. Okay. Uh, right now, um, we're open in Sharondale with the uh, Wing Champs, uh, which is basically a subsidiary of Mahogany's. Uh, we pretty much specialize in barbecue, and, and really our wings is what we really highlight there. Uh, we're located at 2343 East Sharon Road, Road in Sharonville, Ohio. And then the really big project with our other partners um, that um, is a really big hospitality company is um, uh, Talis Southern Barn Grill. And it used to be Area 513 uh, restaurant that's been open for like 10 years. Um, we actually took over that. It's like 10,000 square feet indoor outdoor bars um connected with uh at least five other hotels in connection with that uh that we partnered and basically it's mahogany's 2.0 so oh, okay. it's a lot of live entertainment it's it's really an, an amazing thing that we're doing over there with a live pasta bar uh we have a new pasta line coming out um ice creams and different things like that yeah so it sounds like you're doing the big you know the big question is like what what are you doing now? Is Mahogany's coming back? Somebody had mentioned something about food trucks, but it sounds like the food trucks is just like one part of what your overall strategy is now. 
Well, um, yeah, actually, we, we're thinking about uh, the Mahogany's brand right now with our, our partners. They're speaking about uh, possibly opening Mahogany's in Manhattan, New York. Uh, they, Like I said, they own hotels all over the country. So we're kind of, um, I'd rather do one thing great than 10 things mediocre. So a lot of, a lot of part of being an artist and being an entrepreneur, uh, you just really have to focus. And that was one thing that I learned. Um, one of my big things is building an amazing team and an amazing foundation around me just to be strong and found it. Um, I really, uh, focus more on partnerships now. Because I do want to work, we want to work with people that have skin in the game. You know, I we go out and if I'm inspired by something or someone, I really try to hone in on that and just invest in uh, people's dreams. I, I really got a really great group of people that's invested in me so that, you know, I can get on my feet, you know, pay all of my past debts and bills. And that's what it's about. You know, just basically when you lose everything, you know, just trying to get it all back and, you know, blessing others as well. Mm-hmm. I heard you say earlier, you, you talked about working with other talent. You just mentioned blessing others. Is there opportunities for people out there? And what are the opportunities? Oh, my God. Yes. Like, I, I, I want to hear from entrepreneurs like all over Cincinnati, you know, so that I can introduce them, you know, to uh, our investment team because Brian Robinson has some really great ideas that I wanted um, him to run past you and, and, you know, just put it out there on on some of his uh, ideas on on why he got involved with this project. Um, Brian, do you want to just kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Okay. How's everybody doing? So, oh, great. You know, my name is, that's good. My name is Brian Robinson. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I did 24 years in the United States Air Force. I'm a veteran in that job. I did electronic intelligence and it's still over 250 people currently. I'm a program manager down in Dallas, Texas. Um, and that's enough about my path. Um, what Liz has said is absolutely correct. One of the things that I thought about is how back in the uh, early 1900s, we had something called Black Wall Street. That's where, you know, minorities have uplift other minorities and we populated each other establishments and services to uplift each other. One of the things I did and one of the things I'm trying to do in Cincinnati is bring that culture up to Cincinnati. Um, give people opportunities to uh, to grow. And so as one of us grow and we add another, then that person grows two times, three goes four, four times, four equals fifteen. So I'm trying to make have help us all grow, not just one person. And one of the things I want to say is, um, you know, I noticed that a lot of times that as minorities, we, we're quick to pull each other down instead of uplift each other. I've seen too many times where uh, uh, we can have uh, anybody that's not a minority fail and we just, oh, they just talk that up as a loss, give them another shot. Whereas if it's us, you know, we're considered a failure. We have to stop that mentality. Um, we've got to start uplifting each other. I agree with that. I agree. You know, go back to what you were saying about Black Wall Street, this week in Cincinnati is Black Restaurant Week, where, you know, some folks got together and um, are trying to promote Black-owned restaurants, right? And I was thinking, man, we, this would have been nice back in the day when you were still doing your thing on the banks. I mean, Liz, has the culture changed in Cincinnati? Do you think people think differently about... I don't know, black owned restaurants or black entrepreneurs in general? I think um it, it just goes back to the uh the comment uh that you uh read earlier um from someone saying, you know, ask Liz Rogers uh mm-hmm. something about being thirsty. Uh, I say drink the blessings, try it. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm an I'm an executive chef and an entrepreneur. I don't I don't cook with politics, you know what I'm saying? So politics uh, and business, uh, for me, they just don't mix. And that was an, an epic fail. Um, you know, we, we elected a, a president of the United States that filed bankruptcy on billions of dollars worth of failed businesses and debt. And, you know, yet the country still still, you know, that that was a, a success and he was still good enough to run a country. Um, for me... Uh, I've learned a lot of lessons on being on the bank, but that doesn't mean I have to live in my lessons. I have no regrets on anything. I mean, I really feel like the bank was definitely a blessing for me. Um, 
from all the things that we have uh, coming up. I'm so proud of those three guys right there that's sitting there in that studio with you and want to give them an opportunity to speak just about their experience and what we're trying to do. And we're hoping to be able to add uh, to that, uh, to our visionary program of, of just helping others with other businesses. My thing is like, we're afraid to take risks and then we criticize people for doing it. You never know what you could have done unless you try. You, you have to keep moving and you, you know, you have to understand that you got to keep hope and inspire people and you have, have to be inspired. You can't, you can't be afraid to try. Failure is not a bad thing. And I think that even during the time of the banks project, I mean, there are all those businesses down there failed. They were multi-million dollar chains. It just wasn't the right time uh, for us. Um, there were a lot of things that were going on and, um, it just basically took a shape of its own, but at least we all went for it. You know, you can't criticize someone for going for their dream. I'm hoping like today, somebody out there that's listening, if you have any type of dream, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of somebody that's going to attack you or talk about you or say whatever, you know, because at the end of the day, you only got one life. You can either... You can either just exist or you can just start living. And that's how I live my life right now. You know, I just go for it. I don't care if I'm on a 50-yard line and it's it's only a half a second on the clock. If I get the ball, I'm going for the end zone. Don't matter if I get sacked. Don't matter. It don't even matter. I'm going for it because you never know what you could have done unless you go for it. And that's just the bottom line. Whatever I can do, that's what I do. Yeah, I can definitely dig that. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're speaking with Liz Rogers and her new endeavors. So, Liz, for people just tuning in, just kind of break down what's going on and what's available and how people can be involved. And then I'm going to pass the yeah, mic around so, to the gentleman and just kind of get their thoughts. Yeah, so I'm really hoping that everybody comes out to um, celebrate the rebirth of um, Mahogany for the most part. Um at Tower Southern Bar and Grill, uh, Black Friday, and just come out and support and help me build the brand so that you know we can we can do this uh, with other people um, across the city and beyond. Um, I'm very excited that you know we built something that our our brand is going to be on a much bigger level than than the city of Cincinnati, and that I can finally expand my brand. I've been working on this for like six years. Wing Champ is, is currently open in Sharonville. It's a pretty cool little spot. Just kind of like we're we're actually building a bar inside there now. Um, it's being remodeled. It's going to be pretty much a juke joint. We are emulating mahogany in Hamilton. Um, so that's one really big thing. We got several food trucks. Um, we'll have six food trucks by the spring. Our food trucks are out at different corporate uh, events right now and spots. So we don't keep them on site there. So they're up and running. Um, we're doing like quite a bit of things with um, a new uh, pasta line that we've created. And I do have a Southern uh, inspired ice cream that will be out in the grocery stores uh, next spring and fall. Okay. So that's going to be a pretty cool thing. And you said us. it's going to be where now? Where can people pick that up at? In the grocery store? Um, it, you, yes. Yes. So I'm getting ready to do uh, three. Is that Kroger uh, or? Grocery well, I can't really say right now because right. I haven't signed off on anything. But right. Kroger's is one of one of the uh, places that we are actually going to definitely be. Okay, uh, Liz Rogers. You know, people talk about those food trucks. Is that good business still here in the city, in the county? Are we talking? This is like so. county based. I think so. I mean, you know, it's just pretty much. It's just about having the time to promote it people actually coming out, um, the, the food truck stuff, you know, you really need to just get to a location. We're, we're trying to do more corporate events. Right. Um, just because, just because those are better, um, mm-hmm. the bigger companies that, that really have an opportunity that they don't have cafeterias. So it's just really easier, right. um, you know, to, to get in those areas as opposed to just sitting downtown on the square, which isn't too bad, but you know, you kind of want to do more catering and, and just, just exclusive places where you're not, you don't really have competition. No, I understand. I definitely get it. I I spoke with somebody that does a food truck as well. And they were kind of walking me through the biz. From the outside looking in, it seems cool, right? seems pretty simple. You get some good food and some good marketing. You just pull up, but 
it's so much competition that she said the same thing. Like you really, you really want to just, you don't want to drive around all day, right? You want to, you want to be getting paid to be out at an event. So that's why I thought I'd ask. Well, listen, I, I love to hear this. I want to pass the mic around because the brothers spent their time just to talk about what you do in your role and anything you want to share. Uh, my name is Sean Derby, Chef Sean Derby. So I'm the corporate chef for Liz Rogers and uh, Uptown Tellers. So what I do, uh, so I go around to uh, uh, Wing Champ, Tallis, and then I'm the owner of Triple J's Barbecue, which uh, Miss Liz helped me. That was always been my dream. Miss Liz came and got me from uh, Papados. I used to be the head chef at Papados. Miss Liz came me and elaborate on what she said, though, about going for your dream. So when I, I made a name for myself at Papados, saying then when she came along with the idea of me owning my own business, and she put forth the stepping stones. I was, I'm so glad that I took that, that chance, that risk, everything she explained earlier. I'm so glad I took that. So I, I just want to thank her publicly and Mr. Robinson for uh, giving me that chance and that opportunity. So, yeah. So come. Yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. So uh, Triple J's barbecue. We all over the city. It's food truck. Like she said, we uh, go to different offices different venues. You'll see us downtown uh, on the square, uh, Sharonville, Mason. We're all over the city. So tune in to Triple J's Barbecue uh, on Facebook and Instagram and see where our next location will be at. Yep. So I'm going to hand the mic over to uh, Chef Anthony. He's our head chef at uh, Tallis and let him give you a little insight on that. Again, good morning to everyone. And I uh, do everything that Chef Derby just said about... um, Get an opportunity to fulfill your dreams. And what I learned when I came in contact with uh, Chef Rogers through a couple of different events, and I tried to join her team uh, when she was on the banks. Um, But I'm so grateful now that I've got with her and Mr. Robinson. And, again, I was part of the team over at Papados, and we seem to be wanting to bring that excellence to Palace and our multi-brand company, my part would be an anytime chef. I'm a one-man caterer. Um, we go into homes such as in the Indian Hills, High Park, Avondale, wherever you want to have an event. We're adding wheels to that by getting all of these trucks so we can take our cuisine where it needs to be instead of you coming to us. We find a lot of interaction with dining guests that want to participate in the development of their menu, whatever the occasion may be. So again, uh, I thank these two that's online with you, as well as yourself, uh, Brother Ivy. And I'll pass this microphone over to Chef uh, Charles Graham, which is also our house comedian. So, Brand. How you doing? My name is Charles Graham. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm Chef Charles Graham. I'm uh, one of the head chefs at Wing Champ. Uh, I really, really appreciate uh, Mr. Brian and Miss Rogers for giving me the opportunity to to shine. Once I put this chef coat on, you can't tell me nothing in the kitchen. I'm, you know, I'm I'm all in. And uh, I I also worked at Papa Do's and and like Chef Barrel said, we we t- bring in our excellence to 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 the Talis team, and we want to just we want to shine. We want to make our team proud. We want to stick together. I want to move forward. And uh, Wing Champ is going to have, we're going to have some fun nights. We're going to have, on on Fridays, we're going to have karaoke. On Saturday, we're going to do a little comedy. We're going to, uh, we got excellent food. We got a great team over there. And uh, the Talis team is, is we, we, we going to spark the city. We really going to spark the city because our food is delicious. Our team is great. And I really want to thank our team for being the way they are and bringing me in. And uh, thank you so much. And I'm going to give it back to Nick tonight. I appreciate that, man. That's some powerful testimony, man. Entrepreneurial spirit, brothers doing what they do. Uh, I do have a question, though, a little bit more on the light side. Like they, they say that the way to a man's uh, heart is through his stomach, right? Mm-hmm. So what I want to know is in the reverse, y'all brothers that can cook, right? So how do the ladies respond to that? Uh, I'm taking res- I'm taking. 
uh, I'm taking resumes for my fourth wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, so just go on Chef Darby's uh, website. Right, right. So it, it's safe to assume that, that the women enjoy a, a man that can cook. Is that right? Any quick tips, something I can whip up to make me seem like I'm really knowing what I'm doing for the wifey later on the day? Anything real quick? Okay, okay. So, 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 so what, 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 what's the modern cuisine right now? Like, what do people eat? Does it depend on the, the type of venue that you have? Does that specify the menu? Or, you know, in 2019, you know, Certain people got to have certain things. What is that? Well, what I'm starting to see from where I, what I'm starting to see from where I'm sitting at, um, I'm up in Mason, so kind of like infiltrating in a new territory, bringing this Southern style food there. What I find is everybody likes it, you know, no matter what the ethnicity. So that's what we like because we're after the dream as well as building dreams, as well as building dreams. Um, it's a lot of trends, a lot of foodie people out there, so you'll get a lot of criticism. So it's hard to please every palate out there. And that's why anytime Chef came along with Miss Rogers here, we, again, build around your event. We find that that's easier. If I had to say that there was any style, it's a lot of cross flavorings, infusion of a lot of different things. So you'll get East meets West. Uh, that would be an Asian style, hitting something Southwestern style, bringing it together. Uh, so it's easy to put things together so long as you develop a palate. I came up with a phrase called food foreplay. Uh, I just massaged the spices and the herbs and different things in my mind. If it doesn't work there as if I'm approaching someone out there on the street to say hello to, it's not going to work on that. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo your approach to the herbs. Do you have food? Uh, we do. We, we think gluten-free in some areas. We think fresh. We're not out of a box. Everything's scratched. Uh, so we um, don't use a lot of heavy fats, a lot of salt. Uh, the the cream delicious ice cream line that we have is all natural. Miss Rogers gave us our samples of that. We all went home. I'm eating a uh, sweet potato pie. What were you eating, Chef? Uh, what was cobbler? it? The peach cobbler. And it was crust in the middle of this ice cream, man. I mean, it was unbelievable. In the middle of the ice cream? You're eating this, it's melting, and you're crunching at the same time. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Munchy kill. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and then the pasta line, so we'd take fettuccine or spaghetti. We're actually rendering the flavors of different things and making pasta from that. So actually one of my popular ones there at Talis is a um, smothered chicken collard green pasta dish. I'm looking at you. You all right, Ivy? Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> and it's, it, it, okay, so take the flavor of collard greens, your smoked turkey, and render that flavor, add it to the flour. We have a chef that puts it together for us, uh, Jody Miller. Um, and then I take that, blanch it, we'll saute some other ingredients, such as chicken, more greens, toss that together, hit it with a little smother gravy, and all people went crazy over this one. I didn't want it to work. It was an accident. And everybody loved it, so that's how it happened. Hey, He's hungry Nathan. out here. Nathan? <laughs> Real hungry now. I'm sorry, Liz, what'd hey, you say? Hey, Nathan. So so just elaborate a little bit about that. Um, we Okay, so what I did was, I, I, I always loved the Mahogany's brand. It was never a perfect brand or anything, but we had something special in the community, just the brand itself. Um, but this time I needed to go get some really good chefs. So we kind of like really uh, honed in on these amazing guys. They are their head chefs at Papado's. Papado's did $5.5 million last year. How do I get my brand to be elevated? I have to go get a team that knows how to take that to the next level. These guys know a whole lot more than me. You know, I know things, they know things, and how can we all come together as a team and build something great? You know what I mean? So it's about the experience. Talis is, is really a cool situation because it's an upscale sports bar, right? So I'm like, you know what? We, let's let's make a sweet potato pasta, fried cabbage pasta. Let's let's do some. Uh, uh, we we got a fried chicken and waffle ice cream, right? We got the collard green pasta, like you were saying. How do we do that? Like we're gonna build a pasta bar. We got kind of like a Chipotle Benny Honda situation going, where you come in and this pasta is made like right in front of you in real time live. 
So it's, and you get to make your own combinations, anything from lobster, crab, whatever you want in there. It's like over 600 combinations. We even have a, a brown bourbon uh, butter pasta. We have a cranberry uh, roux sauce. I mean, there's so many different things, and the customer is actually engaged in what their culinary experience is actually going to be. So you, you have to kind of think outside the box, uh, not just when it comes to the culinary piece of it, but what the experience of the restaurant, what's going to keep people coming back. Um, how can we make our brand diverse as well? Because we want diversity in our brand from the staff to the customers to everything, you know, because we want to be in business for a very long time. So I feel like, you know, it's mahogany has always been about the experience and this, and these brands did come from mahogany because really the menus are from mahogany. We got something called Southern caviar. It looks like caviar, but it's a vegetarian dish. It's real sexy. You know, we make Southern food sexy. So we want our customers to come in, even though it's a sports bar, we want our food plated nice. That doesn't mean that, you know, just because you come in in jeans and your work boots, you should still get a nice plate of food. It should still be plated nice. You know, we know people eat, you know, with their eyes first. So these guys here, along with a few other uh, of our culinary team, we wanted a, an elite culinary team. We we have seafood on our on our on our menu now, which we didn't have that before at Mahogany's because no one down there, you know, specialized in that. But with these guys coming from one of the top restaurants in the city, and they've worked there for five, six years or more. This was really an amazing thing, and I'm I'm super blessed uh, to have them a part of our brand. So I'm hoping people do come out um, at our, our soft grand opening next week to just check us out and, and see what we got going on. All right, so that's next week. That's on Black Friday? Yeah, okay. the whole weekend, actually. Okay, the whole weekend. And so what, what so what can people expect from the soft opening? What will be available? Every, well, we didn't do a soft opening menu. We just did the whole menu. We was just like, whatever. I mean, I've been down this road. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we've all been down this road, and uh, it's all or nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's... Uh, Normally, you, you have a soft menu where, you know, you only have five or six items, but... You, once you go soft, you're always going to be soft. It's, it's, it's going to always be hard to transition, but we're going to do the absolute best that we can to deliver an amazing plate of food. Definitely focus on the customer service. Uh, that's the number one thing because we know that we had a, a lot of customer service issue, issues uh, before, um, and we're just trying to do everything better. We're trying to really learn a lot from the mistakes that we made and and, and we're going to continue to to make mistakes as a as a company there is no business that doesn't make mistakes but you know the thing is we definitely want to hear from people we we want to get feedback we want people that want to be there um we'd love to have everybody there but if you hate me if you hate my brand you don't have to come you know would love for you to come see if i can change your mind but that's not something that you have to be forced to do so you know it's not for everybody but it's you know for somebody you know, and, and those are the, the customers and, and the people that we want to focus on, you know, because it's, it's, this was always bigger than Liz Rogers. I've never, uh, in my life opened the business for me. I've always opened a business to help other people. And that's why I believe that God has continued to bless me. And I get to, you know, follow my dream by helping other people so that they can reach back and help others because you want to make a difference in life you know when I'm when I leave here I do want to leave a legacy for my family I want everybody else to be able to leave a legacy for theirs and you want to make a difference and this is my way of of doing that maybe we can just kind of make the city a better place because the African-American community uh, especially with restaurants there, there needs to be more support I mean I'm encouraging everybody to support all the businesses especially during um the Black Restaurant Week, and shout out to Jay Raj and his amazing team for just getting out there, keeping it moving, keeping it pushing, and you know fighting for opportunities in in the community. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, so I've never seen uh, a culture like this in my life in any city, and I've been to a lot of cities, and I've we have over 15. African American soul food restaurants in the city that have been open twenty to thirty years, still open to this day. Um, people support 
um, there's not this stigma. There's nobody running, you know, like not wanting to be affiliated with someone for some kind of relevancy and different things that's going on. So I feel like we can have businesses like that on that level here, you know, because everyone has, we have a brand, you know, and, and the difference is I don't, I don't, I take pride in what I do, you know, and I try really hard to do the things that is right. And just trying to get back on my feet, just like any other American, you know, understand what I'm saying. But at the at the end of the day, um, I'm super excited about next steps and what's coming up in the future. Speaking with Liz I mean, Rogers, I appreciate you. Speaking with Liz Rogers, well, Liz, um, before you go, uh, what's the address for the soft opening? Is this this is open to the public? Is that correct? Is it invitation only? What's the deal? So. So it is open to the public, but I would definitely like to hear from some of my VIPs. Um, you know, just, you know, you can uh, send me a message on uh, Facebook. Um, also, uh, you can call me Champ. You know, you guys need to make some VIP reservations. Um, would love to talk with some of you guys that have been extremely supportive uh, down at the banks. And uh, I feel like we get a chance to do this over again. Um, the Talis uh address uh is out there in mason um it's Tallis southern barn grill so it's right there on uh, king's mill uh, it's right across from the beach water park uh, yeah, by the, ad- Island. the address for that if you need it is 5579 uh 08741 and that's in mason ohio really beautiful uh place 10,000 square feet indoor outdoor bar um, we do have a uh, VIP room that's really beautiful, uh, over 70 TVs. We also have private dining uh, room that has uh, that seats about 60 people. Um, we have uh, outdoor patio. Uh, we also have, uh, and it's, we, we do have like 7,000 square feet that's going to be finished by the spring. Um, and there will be a, a lounge, uh, comedy um, lounge down there, as well as uh, additional banquet facilities. So all in all, uh, finished space is it's over like fifteen thousand square feet plus. Okay, well, Liz, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. You guys have a great one. Absolutely. It's Liz Rogers, everybody. That is great news to hear. And gentlemen, thank you for coming in and, and spending your time. I really appreciate meeting you, brothers, and I wish you the absolute best. Yep, absolutely. It's good to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Wish that mic didn't go out. It would have been a little smoother, but I, we made it work. Yeah, yeah. Wish you the best. <laughs> I absolutely will. I absolutely will. I'm going to post a link on, on my social network so people know. Yeah. Uh, I'm still on the air for another five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Have a great day. Some good brothers in the studio. My office space slash studio. And uh, we made it happen. Well, so now the line is available. We had Liz on and her business partners. I, I just think that um, it's just a great story of uh, perseverance and just staying true to who you are and your talents and doing what you do. Again, Choppers, I've said it for years. I'll say it again. Don't let other people around you, sometimes they're well-intentioned, tell you what success and failure is, okay? Make your plan. You determine it, right? From the outside looking in, people might be like, man, that didn't work, but listen, Everything is about learning. If you're not learning from these various adventures and endeavors, then you really are losing. I agree with, I agree with Liz. I mean, the losers are the people that don't try. Those are the losers. If you give it your all and things, you know, things happen, maybe luck doesn't favor you or something inexplicable, that ain't no loss. You didn't lose. You winning. Because you living. You taking risks. So you know me, I'm all about living outside the comfort zone. I like to be taken outside my comfort zone. I like to be around people that challenge me. Um, You know, I think you should put yourself in situations where you feel those butterflies. I mean, there was a time in my life when I was searching for that, that nervous feeling, like uh, just not, just being unfamiliar, not sure. Man, don't run from that. Run toward that. Embrace that. And if you give it your all, no matter how it turns out, you winning. You winning. You successful. So I, I can't speak directly about Liz Rogers, and I don't know all the details of what happened and what went wrong. She was speaking to it, but again, I feel the same way about the situations I did when the situation was going on. 
I support black entrepreneurs. I support these sisters and brothers doing their thing. And when I see people being taken advantage of, I'm going to react. I thought it was BS. You had black people that was trying to use this sister. And they did successfully for their own political gain. And you had a lot of um, insincere and biased so-called journalism. So-called journalism. And look at what's going on at the banks right now. They had to put a freaking Ferris wheel down there just to attract people. If that doesn't tell you any, everything about the banks, that they had to put a Ferris wheel, F-E-R-R-I-S, something like that, then uh, I don't know what to say. It is what it is. So, you know, that's what I do. I sit back and I can kind of learn from other people's mistakes and or other people's successes and or just situations that other people are going through. And uh, that's how I look at it, you know. You may have tried something that didn't work out. People around you want to tell you you wasted your time. You only waste your time if you didn't lose something. You didn't learn something. If you learned something, you didn't waste your time. God was teaching you something. Simple as that. I will, I will reach out to Brother Damon Lynch, CG Dub, to see if we can get him on to talk about that expungement uh, program. I will certainly do that. Give me one second, Choppers. And we know everybody, you know, we know that we know who hates black women in the chop shop. I hate to put it that way. I wish I didn't have to put it that way, but that's what it seems like. That's what it seems like to me. Mason writes, why all the haters from the usual suspects? (laughs) Right. Somebody was in here bashing real early. But uh, props to Liz. It sounds like they got, she got a plan she's executing and uh, I hope she's successful. It's great to talk to those brothers. And uh, you think I'm joking. I'm going to reach out to the chef and give me some little tips. They talk all that jazz about the way to a woman's heart is to, is, is to a man's heart is through his stomach. That's the same thing with a woman. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. You can cook too. What? Oh, you, yo, you a keeper, at least for a little while. At least for a little while. Yeah. These modern women don't want to cook. Yeah, fellas. They should put together like some classes for men. Uh, fellas, if you're single, you're trying to get you a lady, that'll get her. You find out what one of her favorite dishes is, or maybe you create a new dish that becomes her favorite. Psh, you in like Flynn. You are in, buddy. <clears throat> no pun intended. It's too early in the morning for that. Although it is after 9 a.m., so we can make those kind of things. Nate always reads your questions. Uh, Sissy Tigers writes, good morning. A lot of people are saying, she says, CGW, you didn't answer my question. Um... Oh, I did add, uh, you know what, you said scroll down, but I had already asked a question about, it was something you asked CG Dub, and I answered it. I asked her that. I did not get to the question about the OTR. I was going to ask her about how she feels about moving back to the OTR, uh, but I did not answer that question. You're correct. And I'm very curious to know the answer to that, too. But, you know, wherever, man, Hamilton County, you know, she's doing her thing, and I love it, man. I love it. It's beautiful. I hope she's super successful. I hope all those brothers and sisters are successful. And I wish them the absolute best. And that's the other thing about it is, you know, you don't have to get caught up in revenge in this life. Don't waste your time with revenge. Just go be successful. That's all you got to do. And Liz Rogers don't have to do a damn thing, but go out and be successful. She's successful. Psh, that's it. All that stuff that happens at the banks means absolutely nothing. You know, all, the only thing that happens is that an element of Cincinnati got exposed for what it really is. That's what really happened. You know what I'm saying? So, I could take, you could take that and put it into your own personal life. The same deal. These suckers on your job trying to get you down, be successful. You mad at the white man for racism and what he did to your people? Then be successful. Raise a successful black family. Keep your finances together. Be successful. Become a property owner, right? And play the whole American game. But do it successfully. Do it successfully. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to do nothing else. That's all you got to do, man. It's easy to say, though. G-A-H, right? Cooking for a woman is another level and will get you that extra dessert. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not that I can cook. I mean, I, I, you know, I just over the years, between myself and the wifey, when we first got married, I was more of the cooker because, like I said, I was grown, I was groomed by my mother and grandparents to be self-contained. So, you know, I know how to cook for my palate even at a young age. I know how I like it. Oh, you don't like your burgers like this? Well, I like them like this. <laughs> But it's a, I used to whip something up for the wifey when we first got together. It was our favorite thing, man. You're right. You get all the sweet desserts. Oh, you were here cooking too? And you got a job. 
What? You smart? Damn. Uh, CG Doug writes, ooh, we ain't nothing like a man who knows his way around the kitchen. Hashtag sexy. Uh, <laughs> All already know. I already know. Um, it's called Talis Bar and Grill. Talis, Southern Bar and Grill. And she's opening up some different things. She's saying it's not mahogany's. Um, but it's a lot of stuff from mahogany's in terms of the Southern cuisine. I love it, man. Nothing wrong with it. The brother talked about how he was over at Papa Do's. Now he got his own spot. What's not to love about that, that story? That's how it should be. You know what I'm saying? You learn from the people that's doing it. Boom, you get out there and do your own thing. That's how it should be. Sharp writes, great flows this morning. Um, Some congratulations. Um, Some congratulations. Will Liz and company be looking for, I, I didn't get a chance to read that. Drop writes, the Desperate Democrats fame impeachment circus is underway. Impeach 45. So we knew the drop would be in here with that nonsense. Again, I'm not into the whole impeaching 45. I, I, I'm not really invested in that. If that's what the Democrats want to do, go right ahead. But I'm not really looking for him for Trump to be impeached. Like that's not going to be like the cherry on the top of my Sunday. You know what I'm saying? The more I think about it, the more I'm coming to the conclusion that what I want to hear from the Democrat party are ideas, policies that will really matter to me. Yeah. Do I think that Trump, that Trump is untrustworthy, that he's a louts, that he's a cad, that he's a narcissist, that he's a liar, that he's a, that if, that if he's not, that, he, that if he, that if he doesn't harbor racist ideas, and we know he does because a lot of simpletons harbor these racist ideas. And we know that Trump is a very simple man. So if you want to run down the personal stuff and the policy stuff, I'm with you on that. I'm not saying I think Trump's a great guy. I just don't give a damn about this impeachment. You know, take him out at the polls with better ideas. Went over America with better ideas. And then put those ideas in place that really matter. Give me a candidate that's going to represent me, not just because they're, they're not going to be Trump. That's easy. The easiest thing in the world to do is to get a candidate that's not going to act personally like Trump. Go on Twitter and act like a 16-year-old. Say obnoxious things. But that's easy. But I want a candidate that's going to represent those kitchen table ideas that, that I care about as a father, as a man, as a black man in America. I want a candidate that's going to speak to the particulars, the specific issues and challenges that matters to me and mine. And I care about that more than I care about getting rid of Trump, quite honestly. You know, but again, policy wise, you when you run down, I can run down a couple of things that matter to me where I'm on the opposite end of Trump real easy. Everything else seems to be, uh, we don't like him because he's distasteful. They don't like Trump because Trump is challenging the U.S. presidency. You know what? He should challenge what it means to be president. He should. He should. I'm telling you, when, when, when Trump gets out of office, you will have constitutional law, president. You know, you have scholars who'll be analyzing his impact on, pres- on the presidency. And I'm telling you what the impact's going to be. The, the conversation is going to be not what the impact's going to be, but the conversation will be he's challenging what it means to be president. Every time they say, Mr. President, you can't do that, he says, I can do what I want to do. And, he, and he'll try to, he'll try to, Trump will try to do something else. And they'll say, Mr. President, you can't do that. He'll say, I, I want to do, I'm president. Take it up with my lawyers. There's, I mean, there's like five cases right now all around the various challenges that, challenges that we've gotten from the Trump administration from his taxes not being revealed to the fact that he might be enriching himself, making money off of being the president. It's a whole list of them. And guess what? Trump don't care. He's built for this, man. He he ain't worried worried about these little lawsuits because he's 70, number one. He's wealthy. He's already did what he wanted to do when they said, oh, Mr. Trump, you can't detain these people on the border. What did he do? He did that shit anyway. He did it anyway. Oh, Mr. Trump, you can't. This is illegal. We got babies in cages. He said Obama had babies in cages. So, I mean, I think that if you really think about it, I think black people can look at Trump and think, man, I wish Obama had challenged everything the way Trump is, whether he was right or not. 
And that's why people like Trump. That's why they like him. Because even though he be talking on some goofy-ish, I don't think he's necessarily great for America. But he's willing to fight. He's willing to do whatever it takes on some issues, even if you think he's dead wrong. Why is he fighting to put kids in cages? Because that's what he said he was going to do. You don't like it, take me to court. See, that's what we found out. When the president does something and people think that it might be unconstitutional, legal, he don't just stop. They take it to court. <laughs> that's what happens. And that's what's happening right now, man. We need Whoever the next president comes in, we need him or her to do the same thing, only in a progressive way. Challenge everything. Oh, the, oh, the opposition party isn't going to like this. F them. F them. We'll make it like it. You know that? I, I think there's something to be admired there, quite honestly. Yeah, I don't know if they'll do it. If Bernie gets in there and Bernie's on that progressive issue, he feels like it's the right thing to do, then fight it. Do it. Do it. Push the buttons. Make it happen. See what happens. But uh, that's just me spitballing. What do you think? 513-873-7134. More well wishers to Liz Rogers. Pim Ray's great guest, Nate. Thanks for depicting what powering through and perseverance look like, right, to Liz Rogers. She just says she ain't stopping. I, I'm glad. I'm glad. I wish her the best. I wish anybody in that situation the best. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm trying to remember. I remember, uh, I want. Listen, I had no reason to go to the banks. There's nothing on the banks for me in particular. I don't have no business interest down there. And I'm thinking back. At that time, I was in another, uh, like, different, a different milieu doing talk radio. And I remember I had to go out of my way to spend some money because I wanted to support. And I'm sure many of you did the same thing as well. And it just didn't turn out. Sometimes it's like that. That's the other thing. Sometimes as an entrepreneur, you got to know when you got to stop, too. That's the other thing. Let me see. Uh, Women love food porn more than men behind the knife and cutting board. At the end of the day, ladies love it all day, every day. I used to go to their house and make something up with what she had in the house. Is that right? He says soaking wet. Is that right? That's good to know. King Kobla writes, a man that know how to cook is always just a woman's curiosity of who that man is. At the end of the day, them women going home to Apollo from love and hip hop. Scheming niggas get the extra desserts. Is that right? Uh, TNT is in the house. Uh, Pat Rice, I wish Liz the best as well. Great interview. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad she had her, her crew together. It was great to meet those brothers. And um, hopefully you were able to hear it all and it all made sense to you. I, I, I thought it was a, a really good conversation. Appreciate it. It's just all inspirational. That's all it is. Just extrapolate from her story and put it in your narrative where it fits in a positive way where it motivates you to take it to the next level. And that's it, man. There's a lot of places to open a business if you want to do a restaurant. It don't have to just be on the banks. And, you know, I think that if she's got good cuisine, I think people will go. And they'll go back because people love to go out. They love places where they can get some some food. They're not going to get salmonella poisoning. They're not going to have bubble guts for the next two weeks because you went to go eat. You know what I'm saying? You got bubble guts all week long. You know what I'm saying? Who's got time for that? Not me. Not you. No one has time for that. Good morning, everybody. 513-873-7134. Now, listen, if you didn't get a chance to watch any of the Is He Cutting Through the BS podcast with uh, Fast Pitch and Clue Magic, then you can go over to Send Digital Media and check out the live stream. The audio is not up yet. It'll be up shortly. And you can check out um, their show from last night. Um, the Constitution gives the presidency defined power. Secretary, yeah, kind of. It kind of does until you have a president that challenges what it means to be president. And that's what's happening right now. Hey, what's up, Sean Derby? Just send me a friend request. Hey, Sean, I see you, bro. I'm going to confirm that. Appreciate you. What's up, Vaughn? What up with you, Vaughn? Appreciate you, man. Um, What's up, Lily? Anthony, what's up with you? Brandon, Brett, Anthony. Uh, what's up, Jai? I like that name, Jai. What's up, Sherry? Good to hear you, Angela, Tara. 
Uh, that's a different Angela. Alice, what's up with you? What's up, Mo? Greg? Appreciate it. Trying to encompass all the people. Uh, again, there's people that listen on TuneIn. Um, there's people that listen and they just listen. And I'll get a text message like, Nate, you nuts, man. Or, Nate, I listen, but I don't call in. Hey, I get it, man. That's the nature of any talk radio show. Just sit back and chill. We got this. We got this. Don't worry about it. We got it. Sit back. So let me turn my direction here to, look at it, oh, man, I like that. I mean, it's just so much activity happening in the political realm here in this city. And I'm seeing it more and more and more. Let me see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Oh, thank you, Angela. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. I don't care who you are, man. No, nobody does anything by themselves. I mean, I guess it is possible, but 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 if you get any, if you achieve any kind of success, no matter what it is, it could be an entrepreneur or whatever, usually it ain't just you that got you there. Somebody helped you, somebody shared your stuff, somebody gave you a, a text message or gave you a a, a a recommendation, connected you with a contact. I mean, that's usually how things happen. Uh, so I really appreciate it. Appreciate the shares uh, for the content that, that, that we are uh, promoting. And um, I just want to acknowledge that. I appreciate it. People, I'm on Facebook right now scrolling. I was reading some of the uh, the messages that I received. Uh, Tracy Rice, you sound mad, Drop. Tracy, Liz Rogers is a black female businesswoman. I ain't mad at her. Uh, Hackshaw Jim Thuggin writes, which one of them dudes in the studio told Lizzo that people will be wanting fried chicken, mac and cheese, and greens after a Reds game? I feel sorry for Liz because the people in her corner left her down. Uh, Hacksaw, a.k.a. Fame. Listen, bro, we get it, man. Why we got to go back in the past? I get it. I get it. You never know. I don't know. I don't know what the folks leaving the game wants. I have no idea. Can't be mad at her attitude. Either you go for it or you don't, but you can't expect results from work you don't do. You know, for me personally, um, how are we getting a call here? Let's take it real quick. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Mr. Ivy. How are you? I'm doing great. Sister Iris. Good. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm calling on the back line. This is Jesse Rowley's line. Um, I just wanted to say, listen, and I'm, first let me say thank you for having Liz on. There is nothing wrong with reconstruction, and that's what you see business do all the time. And if you're not in business, then, you know, take a business course so you can understand that we see some big corporations that reconstruct and come and get your tax dollars and then build back up. We see them move. We see them change names. We see them add in partners. We see investors come. We see a lot of things. And so when I'm reading some of these things about fried chicken, macaroni, and cheese, hell, the Eagle sells that, don't they? And you see people down and over the run. But when Liz was asked to Facts. come on the bank, because it, it, it wasn't her problem that people didn't come up. The problem was the deal on the banks. The problem was the politicians and the game plan. And here's the last problem, Nate, because our tax dollars paid for, built, and still are contributing to the banks. Below is the county, above is the city. There are no black-owned businesses down on the banks. Folks should be mad about that. Stop focusing on one. We live in a time, we're in the second decade of the 21st century, and we don't have a black-owned business, whether it's male, female, or family-owned on the banks. Our tax dollars go down there, and I'm a taxpayer on multiple levels, and I need reciprocity. So when Liz was asked to go on the banks, Man, I was excited because my tax dollars said give it to her and allow her to thrive. Allow her to fail as other businesses have. Toby Keith got five point five million of your tax dollars. The city and the count the city was fifth on the list to get repaid. So when we make these, when we go out and we read Wikipedia, which ain't nothing and to nobody, and you think that that is the accurate fact of the matter, that's not. That is not the fact of the matter. Why are we trying to dog this woman for reconstructing her life and following her dreams? Liz Rogers went through hell on the banks. Liz Rogers was successful in Hamilton. She had a successful advertising business. So 
you know, I just hope that we don't we we would have the welcoming mind and heart and the welcoming of our dollars as we do the other businesses that we run to. We we are running to buy chicken from Popeyes or wherever that is. We run to all these other restaurants and we give our give our dollars away, whether it's garbage or not. We are run back, but when we try to get out here and we try to do business. We're scrutinized in a way that's really unfair, and it's, and it's that internalized oppression that drives that. So we need to check ourselves and be more about being selfish of who we are and where our dollars go so we can continue to give back. You could have done, had any party down at Mahogany's on the Bank. I certainly did. I had my birthday party down there, had many gatherings down there for people. Uh, many, many people had events down there, but we don't see that. And those, that's our money that goes on that bank. So for me, that's a problem. And whether it's inconvenience or not, they're still taking our tax dollar. They're still giving it to those people. Like I said, they gave Toby Keith $5.5 million and he went out of business. And then the employees had to sue to get their back pay. That didn't happen in Liz Rogers' case. It wasn't the food that Liz was selling, whoever the, the brother is with the name that I don't know. That wasn't the, the problem wasn't her food. The problem was the politics behind it. The problem was she was black owned. That was the problem. And those are the facts. And I just wanted to make sure that people were clear about the facts and go support Wing Champs and support Talis. Support Liz Rogers like you do all those other places where we go and we don't own and we can't we can't even talk to the owner. We don't even know who that person is. But when we do, man. But let's let's build that and show our children that we 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 can be part of the capitalistic society. That's our that's our right as well. So I appreciate you having Liz Roger on. I love hearing. I was listening in my phone, but it died. So we had to listen on Jesse's phone. I appreciate you uh, giving her a voice and letting her voice be heard. And she does have phenomenal dreams. And if you listen to her as a restaurant tour. She is right on point. She is right on point. So kudos to you, Liz Rogers. Keep pushing, girl. And we got your back out here. Thank you, Nate. All right. Take it easy. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I agree. She's right. It has nothing to do with her food. It was because it was black-owned. And that's why I asked about the culture, because in my opinion, the reason why she was targeted for years is because she was black-owned. And she was willing to get in the media and speak her piece. You know, too many, too many people think that a bowed head is a normal posture in this city. It's not. Stand up. Speak your mind. Everybody afraid. What you afraid of? What are they going to do to you? Um, but again, uh, it's easy for me to say, right? I, I fully admit that. It's real easy for me to say from where I'm sitting right now. I get that. You're right about that, but it's still true. It's still true. So it had no diff. It was about the fact she was black owned, but that was then. Now I see black owned, man. Every time something happened, they talking with uh, the good brothers down there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I see Means Cameron on the the news all the time. Now there's an embracing of it. That's why I asked, or is there an embracing of it? It seems like it is. Are we shifting culturally? If Mahogany was on the bank right now, same deal. Would the same situation happen? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody said something about, you know, so, uh, the uh, the her cuisine as compared to the sports venues. But those sports venues are not there 24-7. They're only there for a certain time during the year. You got all kinds of stuff. You got restaurants. How many restaurants are within uh, Uber distance, a $6 Uber distance of the banks? A lot of them. Yeah, there's people, believe it or not, that come into Cincinnati all the time, man. These restaurants... Get out of towners who are coming to town for business and for pleasure in Cincinnati all the time. And I just feel like there's a segment of the city that doesn't really realize that. There are tens of thousands of people that come to Cincinnati for conventions. They love it. And when they come to Cincinnati, you know what they want? They want to go somewhere to eat that was in like a five, six dollar Uber ride. And if you're on the banks, boom, you are. Get there real quick. And you know, while you're criticizing that, they got two other restaurants down there that do far more than just finger food. But I don't want to get into it any more than I already have. I think I've done it. We all understand what it is. 513-873-7134. All right, so let me move on and talk about more things. Okay, I want to bring some more things to the conversation. We spent the first hour or so talking about Liz and things like that. 
See, Damon Dash was arrested for unpaid child support. Mm, pay your child support, B. People are still talking about Harriet and Julia Roberts. I think it's amazing, but I don't think it ever would have happened. And people are making a big deal because some executives suggested that Julia Roberts can play Harriet Tubman. I don't think it's a big deal. Number one, in, I, I think it's stupid. I think it's a con- completely tone deaf and racially insensitive idea. But these are creatives. And I don't know how you do your creative process, but like if I'm in a room with other people and we're trying to come up with something, we, you know, we, we spitballing. You know, ideas might come out. You're trying to build upon other people's ideas. It may not be perfect. I mean, I'm sure that if we had access to all the bad ideas that some Hollywood executives said in the creative process, we probably are miles to be 10 times even more wide open in utter disbelief. But I mean, they never made the movie. Making the movie would have been insensitive. Promoting the movie with it. But some guy talking, you know, hey, 26 years ago, he wants to make have Julia Roberts do Harry Tubman. It was probably a joke. Or maybe it would be like Harriet Tubman, the musical. Okay? It wouldn't be an African story, an African-American story. It'd probably be a European story. Her name wouldn't be Harriet. It'd probably change it. You know what I'm saying? I don't see the big deal. Uh, Master P to Colin Kaepernick, forget the NFL. Let's start our own league. Now, that's my idea. I love that. I'm all about starting your own, and in particular media. I love that idea. And there's no problem with the idea, except that I don't think that American audiences would really get into it. Uh, It depends. They'd have to offer something different. You got to have the personalities that, you know, the NFL has ingrained itself into Americana. Every football season, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's it's not, it's not, it's not right. If you don't have a football season, this ain't my opinion. This is my observation of the world around me. Because personally, I don't give a damn. If they didn't have an NFL season next year, I wouldn't sleep. If they didn't have a, a, no basketball next year, I'm not going to lose no sleep. I'll be okay. I'm just telling you. Let's keep it all the way real. So I like that idea, but people tune into the NFL because the talent of the NFL. The NFL, college teams, they spend millions of dollars trying to turn these guys into superstars. So when they become a superstar, now they're marketable. And I love that idea, but I wonder if people really get into it. Because people say, oh, yeah, you do it. Yeah, you do it. And then when you do it, they're like, hmm, I think I still like the NFL. <laughs> that's, that's how people are. Man, you should do it. Get your own SFL. It's going to be the BXL, the Black Football, BFL, Black Football League, right? I love that idea. That's great. That's a hot idea. Um, but will those same people that are telling Master P and others to do it, will they actually support it once it gets done? I don't know. I don't know. It gets a little bit shaky then. It gets a little bit shaky. 513-873-7134. Uh, shout out to Jesse. Tamir Rice Safety Handbook. Samira Rice, which was Tamir's mother, along with the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties, um, created a booklet in memory to teach kids, union that is, um, create a booklet in Tamir's memory to teach kids what to do when they encounter cops. That's something. The Tamir Rice Safety Handbook. I love it. Props to his mother. Um, but damn, that's that's a difficult thing right there. Man, it bears the boy's favorite color of red on its cover and it's in his smiling photograph adorns his back above the epitaph, quote, in loving memory of Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice was a young boy, 12 years old, who was playing with a BB gun up in Cleveland. And somebody called the police and said, you know, I think there's a kid with a BB gun. The police showed up and they reacted like Conan barbarians. They did not follow police procedure. Uh, sidebar when it comes to policies and procedures, this goes across the board. What's the use of having a policy and procedure if it's not going to be followed? Why do it? The more I get, the, the, and that's the reason why people just, they, they clash with the system. Because the older I get, the more it's confirmed what I've already known. Is that people, people make up the rules and apply them when they want to. It's all kind of rules. But, you know, not everybody has those rules applied to them fairly. And that goes across the board. I'm talking about the American judicial system. I'm talking about on your job. 
I'm talking about in your relationships. That's just the way it is. There, the, the idea of fairness, throw that out the window. There is no fairness. You can have all kinds of policies and procedures. Like you can have a policy and procedure that you're not supposed to taser kids. And then you taser a kid and there'll be people arguing that nothing should happen to you. That's ah, no big deal. Like you can have a policy and procedure that says that before you taser anybody in Cincinnati, that you have to give them a warning. Now, don't you think that's a, there's a good reason why they might have a, a procedure like that? Like, hey, our procedure is before you taser somebody, you got to give them a warning. Why is that so critical? Because if you follow the procedure, you might not have to even taser them. They might just listen to you. And then when officers don't follow procedure and put people's lives in jeopardy, you got people in the community making excuses for them. Well, you shouldn't have stole that candy bar. Wait a minute. What's the use of having policies and procedures if there's no real ramifications if they're not followed? I don't get it, man. So these officers did not follow procedure. This man did some T.J. Hooker, and that was an old-school cop drama show that was starred by William Shatner. I bring it up because it had the most ridiculous, like, police scenarios ever. He's, like, dodging bullets and roll. he's barrel rolling over the hood of a Chevy. The fuck? Hair always in place. T.J. Hooker. It's fantasy time fantasy police well it's an eight page guide it's available for download on the ACLU's website uh, shout out to Jesse he posted a link in here share 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 where you think it's appropriate the booklet also includes specific instructions on whether teachers or other school officials are able to search backpacks and lockers and a warning to children that resource officers often share what children tell them with other officers damn it's telling all the juice all of it. Bottom line advice. If police stop you, first ask to speak to a parent or a guardian, to an attorney or both. Where we hear that? We heard that on the Is It Just Me podcast with Donnie B. She broke that down. In the aftermath of the Netflix television uh, series, When They See Us, based upon uh, the, the life of the now exonerated five. She broke this down. You Tell your kids not to talk to them. It don't mean that you're anti-police. It just means that your kids start talking. They might incriminate themselves. And uh, it seems that's the same advice in Tamir Rice's booklet put out by his mama in the ACLU Tamir Rice Safety Handbook. They should pass this out of all the schools. Uh, My daughter will see this tonight. Matter of fact, I'm 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 going to email her right now. Yes, Little Buddha has an email address. I'm going to email her right now. I communicate with my daughter via email as well because sometimes I can't remember. I am pissed that this even exists, man, because that little boy deserved better. He deserved better policing than he got. This man jumped out the car before the car even stopped and fired on a 12-year-old. Way to go. You're a real man. You're a real man. You're a real police officer. I am pissed. I am pissed all over again now thinking about this case, man. It is terrible. Should have put that man under the jail. He should be in jail right now. If you're stopped by police, stay calm. Don't run. Don't argue or resist. Keep your hands where the police can see them because they might think, oh, he's fidgety. Oh, he's shaking. Oh, the black man. Oh, he's, oh, he's, because, you know, black people are automatically aggressive. I just had to check somebody about that the other day. Just had to check somebody about the other day. Trying to uh, permit patty meat? No, we ain't having it. I ain't going to have it. This is very comprehensive. I like what I'm reading. And, oh, my God, it's just so terrible. And loving member of this sweet little boy. Who knows what this boy would have grown up to become? This boy could have grew up and, and, and found a cure for cancer. We'll never know. We'll never know. Taken from us by a Conan barbaric cop with an itchy trigger finger who didn't follow police policy. That don't even sound right. You're going to jump out of a moving car and start firing? Damn. Sad. It's a good chance that if Tamir Rice was white, he'd be alive right now. It's a good chance. Uh, What is these, little teddy bears or something? Uh, This is just terrible. You know, his mother is just beside herself in pain. You know she is. Let's go to the phones. Good morning, John. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Mr. Nathan Ivey and the good people of Cincinnati. 
as well as the good people around the world with a little feedback bouncing all over the place. Maybe you can correct that. And the choppers, yes. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning. You know, uh, before we get into that factless debate last night, you brought up a couple of good flows and uh, the current flow that you were just talking about. I'm glad you remind the public on the Internet as well as the people around the world about that story in Cleveland. I'm glad you brought us up to speed. I kind of completely forgot about that, but I do remember following that and seeing that horrible video on YouTube, and I watched it over and over, and you're right, uh, to see those cops, and they even slowed it down on one station, slowed it down, those cops. I mean, they barely didn't even put the car in park, and they're both jumping out of the car, firing up. I mean, can you tell me, are these cops still on the force, or have they been fired? Um, the, the one cop was removed. The one who actually pulled the trigger to take my rights, he was removed. And as I understand it, he now has a job somewhere else. (laughs) See, uh, you know, as we talked about many times, there are two sets of laws in this country, one for them and one for us. You think if these cops would have rolled up in a Jewish community, Italian community, Irish community, they would have pulled that stuff? No, they wouldn't have done it. You know, only happens to people of color or black people in our communities. These are people that we pay to protect and serve. Ha, yeah, your taxpayers' dollars, choppers, are going into these assassins in the police department. I look at them as uh, German assassins and Nazis. And this is this goes all the way up to the Supreme Court, the president, and every law enforcement across the country. Now, don't get me wrong, law enforcement. I know you're monitoring the nature, but I'd be sure. I'm not saying all cops are bad, but you got an element within every police department across the country that condones this stuff. As I stated many times, I remember reading about four or five years ago in the back of a Sunday paper, hitting in the back a clip a little block came from the Supreme Court, and this is not coming from John, from Prince and Pam. And the quote I clearly remember, it came from the Supreme Court. We give the police the upper hands of all on all of these cases. I'm like, well, what do they mean by that? Oh, it didn't take John from Prince and Long to figure out what that meant. And that meant that the cops could be judge, jury, and execution, and they won't get locked up. So what I've been seeing since I saw that clip from the Supreme Court, you tell me the police department across the country didn't see that too? So that gave them the green light to gun you down, judge, jury, and execution. And that's what I've been seeing, the pattern across the country in these police departments. So, and it goes, like I said, Supreme Court, local police, prosecutors, judges, they're all in bed with each other. And this will continue until people fight back, until black people fight back. But a lot of us won't do it. We're on the plantation. We're drinking too much damn Kool-Aid until it happens to you. And oh, then you're boy. picking up the phone, calling Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. You think they give a damn about you? Another day, another time with those two characters. Oh, but, you know, you know, it, this is a pattern. And it's not going to change until people fight back. And the only way to fight back is to arm yourself. Look out into the streets. What do you see? This is the wild, wild west. That's what it is. So if if they don't want to take guns away, we see what goes on when kids go into the school and they're being bullied. They pick up arms and they 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 take out the executioner or the person that's bullying them. But the people on the street, okay, yeah, you want to keep your arms, you want to keep your guns, fine, no problem. But when they come into your community, roll up them cops, those dirty cops that roll up into your community, pointing guns at you, it can happen to you. Driving, money, your own business, Mr. Nathan Ivy, you and your lovely family, and they roll up on you with arms, guns out, it can happen any time, choppers. If you, if you don't think it couldn't happen, you're smoking something I don't know about. Okay, let's get to this factless debate last night. Now, now we're going to talk about the debate? Okay, go ahead. How much of this debate, Mr. Nathan Ivey, did you pay attention to? I, I didn't night? watch. And, I didn't watch any of it last night. I got everything off of uh, clips uh, this morning. 
Well, I, I, I tried my best for the first maybe half an hour, 45 minutes to watch it, and then I fell asleep on it because I knew I wasn't going to hear nothing I haven't heard before. Recycled speeches, promises that they know they're not going to keep, you know, but it, I caught the outtakes earlier this morning, the jokes, uh, Bo- Cory Booker going after um, um, a Biden with his fact, fuck, fact lusting laws that he put up, and Cory Booker made a statement and had everybody busted out and laughing. He was going after uh, Biden uh, about the laws and everything, and if, if he was on drugs, everybody bust out laughing. Other than that, you know, it's recycled speeches. They were they weren't saying nothing, none of them. You know, and so it was interesting for 45 minutes. And the next day I know it, I woke up and the TV was on and I shut it off. I, I didn't miss anything, even when I saw the outtakes or the highlights early this morning. But my question to you, and, and all I was interested in, as I stated many times, is reparation. So I did a quick Google and I put a search. In that debate, did anybody talk about reparation? And in that Google search, nothing came up about reparation. Okay, yeah, they talked about the black community and this and that, but how the hell can you come to a big city of Atlanta, Georgia, with all those black people, and you can't bring up reparation? You got them right where you want them. So it shows me the Dixiecrat, or you want to call them the Democrats, the Dixiecrats, how do you do a, a, a debate and not talk about reparation? So you see the fix coming down the pipeline, and and even if they would have brought it up, you know what we what happened with some of them, what Cory Booker and, and Kamala Harris and some of this cat. Well, we need to do further studies. Hell no, you don't need no damn studies. You got all the damn studies right in front of you. Every book, every public, every publication, every re, every report, every report. You don't need no more studies than what you have already. Black people across the country have to decide, and they better decide now between now and this until this election. What the hell do you black people want? You don't need no more damn studies. And, I'm, and when I look across the country and I see different states, well, we're going to do a report. We're going to put. I said, stop it. Here we go again on the plantation. What the hell a report do you need than what you already have in front of you that's been laid out in every publication, every book. And you want a damn report? And if you let these characters, as I stated many times, you let these characters get away with this between now and the election, and then even if you do a damn report, that report may take you, what, two to four years? And it lets them off the hook. The power with power elite. Yeah, we know this, John. That's why we vote, man. I get it, bro. I mean, it sounds to me like it doesn't really matter what happens at these debates. Your mind is already made up. It's Warren right, or bust. Yeah. And yes. now let me ask you this. Are you going to do down ballot, you know, uh, races? Or are you just going to focus on the, on the presidential race in 2020 I'm, in New Jersey? I'm, I'm only focused. I don't care about local and state. All I care is about is a presidential debate. I've already you don't care about it. I've said that to you many times. All I care is about that. But all I want to hear is between now and the election, are they going to deal with reparation? And oh, if they give boy. me lip service with reparation, you're not getting my vote. And every black person across the country should be concerned with reparation. And if not, oh, what did Barack Obama say to you? Get off the damn couch. Put your slippers on. Well, we'll deal with him another day. Reparation, yeah, let's do that. reparation, reparation. That's Sounds all good. I care about. All this other foolishness, if these candidates are not talking about it, they're not getting my vote, and black people should be saying that. The block that you talked about is important, the black people's vote. And if we don't hold these people accountable, then you're flushing your vote down the damn toilet, as far as I'm concerned. Consider. Have a nice day. All right, take it easy. I'll try to after that ridiculous flow. Try my best. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. Sorry. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know. Oh, this man, this man. Well, we'll see. Maybe one day. Are you on Spotify? Are you on Spotify? Do you go to Spotify and listen to podcasts? If you do, you can listen to the Nathan Ivy show on Spotify. You can listen to the Truth to Power podcast on Spotify. You can listen to the Is It Just Me podcast on Spotify. You can listen to the uh, Hot Mic podcast on, on Spotify. You can listen to the Dope Chicks Collective 
on Spotify. And you can listen to the Cutting Through the BS podcast on Spotify. If you're on Spotify, you can listen to and subscribe to any of those podcasts on that platform. And uh, this morning and beyond. You know, a lot of people like Spotify. Yeah, that black man is, uh, I'm not even infuriated. It's just, it's just what it is. So this is the anniversary, uh, dubious anniversary. Five years since the death of Tamir Rice and his mother, along with the American Civil Liberties Union, have released a booklet in the boy's name to guide children through the stress of police interactions. Ever wondered how you're going to talk to your kids about police interactions? Boom, is how you do it. And get this, I'm raising a little boy. Guess what he loves right now? Police. Run around, arresting his toys. You're under arrest. And I, I just look at his mother and shake his head because... He's at a point where he don't understand. Now, where did he get this mythology or these feelings about police? Well, it just goes to show you that at a very young age, children's stories, books, the things that are around kids are centered in, to reinforcing certain beliefs about uh, law enforcement and other so-called authorities, even at a young age. Even at a young age. What do you do? What do you do? Well, maybe you get on this book and use this book as a guide. And uh, put together by Tamir Rice's mother. I bet that was, I don't know. I mean, if it was me, it would be very hard to do. But if I could save the life of somebody else's kid, that would be the best you could ask for. You know, the you know the best you could want is to bring your loved one back. But the best you can ask for is that you can save somebody else from losing their loved one. That's how I look at it. What about you in the waning moments of the show? We got about 20 minutes left in the show. What about you? Let me see. Uh, Kevin Flynn isn't on council right now, but he's still watching City Hall, and he thinks the internal audit committee, which he championed bringing back in 2016, is an important function of City Hall. Okay, that's cool, but the question is, where is the diversity? That's real cool. Um, I see people are connected. That's great. I love what I hear. That's great. That's great. Beautiful. It's being reported that Madisonville neighbors concerned about gentrification as development grows. Okay. Well, if you're concerned about gentrification, what else should you be, should you be concerned about in the city of Cincinnati? Uh, I have been through Madisonville recently, many, many times, and I do know that there's a lot of new construction going on, and we know what that means. We know what that means. Madisonville will be the new uh, um, Oakley. Yeah, Madisonville is the new Oakley. Oh, I love the coming soon size. This is great. And, uh, oh, Layla's. Look at this. Madisonville development over here. You got some new super expensive condos coming. Uh, look at that. Madison Road is going to be electric. That's going to be beautiful, right? And here's a word that I have used in a lot of different places. And now I'm seeing that the local media is picking up on it. Madisonville, here, I'm reading verbatim. This is written by Walter Smith Randolph, WKRC, Local 12. Uh, here's the article. Madisonville is undergoing a renaissance. I've used that term in many levels, publicly and privately. It is a renaissance that's happening in a city. There's a lot of people that's making a lot of fucking money in this city. And they're making more money with all the, the land development. How much are black people getting? It's always been what I've said. But as new businesses and neighbors move in, others are being pushed out. Quote, if you're there and you can't afford to live there, then you have to move somewhere else. So it's displacement and gentrification. Is that right? That is Terry Henry. Says she was priced out the neighborhood. Yeah. Priced out the neighborhood. Because what will happen is you got long-time residents. They're not offered some of the tax abatements that new residents are, new property owners. Other folks can't handle it, but it is what it is. Now, here's the thing about it, though. Let me see here. Look at the plans. Look at how it's going to affect the neighborhood. Same, see. Very interesting. Um... Let me see here. 
Looks like a 60-page report on development deals and incentives will be presented to council members next week. And this article is dated just yesterday. Uh, Council members Tamaya Denard, Wendell Young, and Greg Landsman submitted a motion asking the city administration to take a closer look at balanced development. The goal is to update the city's development and subsidies and incentive programs to ensure that Cincinnati can attract new business while ensuring old businesses aren't pushed out. Is that right? Let me see here. Uh, I'm reading here. It says that her rent went from $900 a month to $3,000 a month. So let me take this back to the OTR. Let me be real with you. Um, and, and, and you might say I'm on a limb here, but, but quite frankly, I'm not sure that $20,000 is enough of an incentive to really help black-owned businesses in the OTR because that shit is hella expensive down there. And it's like, are there a lot of businesses? So here's the way I look at it. So this is this new big plan for the over the Rhine. And this stuff goes back to like in the summer. And I applaud it because you got all of these business fronts in the over the Rhine. We'll call it OTR moving forward. But the over the Rhine is a, a neighborhood in Cincinnati. And it's, it's, it's ground zero for gentrification. If you came to Cincinnati 20 years ago, there are parts of over the Rhine that you wouldn't even want to drive down. And now those same streets are some of the most popular and trendy and hot and buzzing streets in the city of Cincinnati. It's super hot down there. And the property value has skyrocketed down there. And because of the disparities in terms of wealth, you know what I'm saying? You got gentrification. Because quite honestly, if everything was equal, it wouldn't make a difference. Everybody could afford to move where they want to live to. But that's over the Rhine. And oh, there's a place called Washington Park that is in over the Rhine. You're talking about six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars, right? To get something that maybe three years ago was a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you got the money to pay for that, man, it's all good. You get a great place. Could you imagine waking up and Washington Park is right there? You can just walk your dog over to the park. It's like your park. That'd be dope if that's the lifestyle you're looking for. So we already know. So now they got this new program where they're trying to get more black-owned storefronts. Now, you're not going to own the building. You're just going to rent because the ownership has already been decided. And as an incentive, they want to give you $20,000. And all I'm saying is, that ain't a lot of money. That's rent. That's rent. And it's only rent for a year or two. And you got to sign a three-year lease. So to me, and again, some people, I've been told that there's some cheap places in Over the Rhine, but I ain't seen them. I'm sure they're there. I just ain't seen them. And... If your rent is $2,000 a month and they give you $20,000 and say you got to sign a three real lease, even if you wanted to straight apply that to your rent, you cannot. So those are really, to me, the more I think about it, those are not just any business, right? That opportunity for $20,000 for minority businesses to support you and over the run, that's not for somebody just open a business for the first time unless you already got capital. The more I think about it, I mean, that twenty grand. For that, for it to work, that twenty grand can't be life's blood. You know what I'm saying? It can't be the only revenue you got to come in. It kind of be, it's got to be just like a little, a little some extra. That's how I look at it. Cause I ain't a lot of money. Twenty grand, two thousand dollars a month. I mean, hell, let's say your rent was fifteen hundred dollars a month. And think about this. I just read an article to you of a woman who says that her rent from, went from nine hundred dollars a month to three thousand dollars a month, and that's in Madisonville. Can't you imagine what it is over the Rhine? So, I mean, it needs to be like two, it needs to be like $100,000. You know what I'm saying? If you're really going to try to get some businesses down there that maybe ordinarily couldn't afford to, it wouldn't be a part of their business plan or whatever. But I don't know. I mean, to me, that seems like a specific, that's not every business in Cincinnati that that $20,000 is going to work for them. Because there's a lot of businesses that could get that $20,000 and it would be gone in a year. And you still got two years left on the lease that you signed. And you'll be stuck, Chuck. You'll be stuck. 
Currently, 1006 AM in the Queen City. Nathan Ivy with you. Talking through today's news. Right now, we're talking about an article that's, that's reporting about the renaissance that's happening in new developments in uh, Madisonville. Shout out to Madisonville. And I'm happy for Madisonville. The new Madisonville. <laughs> that's right. Get ready for the new Madisonville. And let me see here. It looks like people are aware of it. They're talking about balanced development. I guess the new term is balanced development, huh? Okay, we shall see how balanced it is. I agree, Nate. Landlord can increase rent whatever they want. Still lack of low-income housing. Uh, Eli, your fish, right? Sad to say the only people I see survive police shootings had shot first. They're all in jail. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Um, I see Lawrence is in the house. What's up, brother? So they're having a conversation and let you have that. Some of the big three and uh, the Ohio Kings, which I will 100% support. We talked with one of their founders, Brother Aldrich. His team put that together. And then they're going to kick off their team. Their game is really, really soon. I'll be there. I'm going to certainly be there for sure. Uh, Lawrence Rice, tax dollars or not, the point is that black businesses have to quit begging for inclusion. When people show you who they are, believe them. If white businesses don't want your black-owned business next to theirs and the business owner knows it, they have to assume the risk that comes with that. Uh, Ashley writes, uh, great interview. My husband and I got engaged at Mahogany's in 2012. Is that right? Is that right? That's great. That's great. Yeah, if you missed it, we talked to uh, Liz Rogers, who's a black female entrepreneur, restaurateur, and she made big news. Or should I say the people who had a problem with her made big news. I, I still don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, the city of Cincinnati has taking a uh, calculated risk on a lot of businesses. That's what they should be doing. They should be taking risks on businesses to try to, you know, give incentive, incentives and to try to attract, you know, certain businesses to have a base here in the city of Cincinnati. That's what they should be doing. And when people come in from all over the world, as they do, whether you know it or not, I know it to be true. There are people that come from all over the world to Cincinnati. When they do, guess what? They want to eat. And even if it's over, it's, even if they're coming in town for one night, they want to go to a Cincinnati-based restaurant. They may not want to eat in the hotel. They want to get out of the hotel. They want to go somewhere to eat. And why can't you have a Southern cuisine-style restaurant that's black-owned on the banks? They don't have to sell just chicken wings and beer. You know what I'm saying? Ruth Chris does more than just chicken wings and beer, don't they? Maybe I'm speaking of somebody else that's not down there. I don't know. I don't know all the names of the uh, establishments down there. If I'm incorrect, please set me straight. Please set me straight. Tiffany writes, uh, or Miss Tiffany writes, don't be too happy for Madisonville because the old residents definitely do not like the high price homes being built there. I know they don't because it's going to call. It's going to take the prices up, take the taxes up. But what are the hurdles that prevents balance developing? I, I, there, it, it, somewhere in this country, that I have to believe that there are some good examples and best practices of how to do that. Let's find out what they are and adopt them. I'm sure that's what city council members do. I'm sure they research best practices or their staff does, and they sit down and see if they can incorporate it here in the city of Cincinnati. It just makes perfect sense, right? It just makes perfect sense. I mean, psh- uh, Hacksaw writes, basketball has been an Olympic sport. Ice Q F and over Baron Davis and has always been known for shady business. Again, if I started playing a sport at three years old, by the time I got to college, my mama is $200,000 in debt with the house and car that got fronted to her for me to come to college. Know the whole picture, guys. I'm not sure what he's talking about. I think they're having an inside conversation. Uh, I completely zoned out through the majority of Zone's call. I heard nothing of what he said. See? Um, let me see here. Talking about the big three. I think the big three is a great business model. It's working. There's an appetite for people uh, who love just basketball. They really like professional basketball and they want to see it be played. And Ice Cube came up a way where you can still see professional players play outside the NBA. I know the NBA is somewhere like, why in the hell didn't we think of that? Because they should have. 
Uh, listen, thank you so much for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it. Let me see where we are in our time frame. Yeah, we got about five minutes left in the program. I want to give you a solid two hours uh, so you can check this out. Uh, you can't win or lose unless you run the race. That is absolutely true. We were reminded again, you're right. You can have the best ideas in the world, but if you don't put them out there, what difference does it make? You could be the eventual winner of whatever the competition is, if that's in fact what you're trying to do. But unless you put your name out there, it don't really matter. That's why I say I always, you know, I have a certain level of respect for people that run for public office because I think just putting yourself out there, whether you're somebody who I think is good for the community or not, and you know I'm not shy about telling you who I think is good for the community. Either way, you know, I always think that there's a certain level of uh, of uh, of courage because you're putting yourself out there to be scrutinized in every way by everybody. And it will happen, <laughs> especially on this show. It will happen, almost certainly. Um, what am I looking at here? Uh, Ohio lawmakers are considering. So somebody said that stand your ground has already been passed. Is that true? I'm reading now that Ohio lawmakers are considering another gun bill that would make the stand your ground law even broader. Right now, someone must try to walk away or de-escalate a situation before they can legally pull their gun. Did you know that to my CCW folks out there? Gun rights supporters say people shouldn't have to try to run away before defending themselves. I would, it depends on the scenario. I would say that that's a really good thing to have in place. You should, if you, if you have, a, in my opinion, if you got a weapon, the last thing you want to do is murder some, kill somebody. It wouldn't be murder necessarily. That's a legal, I think, conclusion. But that's not what it's all about. It's about protection. So I, to me, you should try to get out of the situation. Try your best to get out of the situation. If you cannot, and you absolutely are pushed to the wall, then you do what you got to do. But some gun rights supporters, they want to be able to do anything just because they feel a certain way. And we're living in the era of the sensitive Negro, the sensitive American. Everybody's super sensitive now. There are more sensitive-ass men. Let me say there's a higher concentration of sensitive men than I've ever seen in my entire life. I had never seen them like that in my entire life. This is a whole new generation out here. So what do you think? Do you think that you should have to walk away or de-escalate a situation? Or should you be able to, when first confronted, ascertain for yourself like the police do as to how big the threat is and uh, decide? It was first introduced on Tuesday. It had its first hearing yesterday. I'll keep my eyes on it. We'll discuss it. This matters to Ohio. And I think for people of non-white people in particular, it has a huge impact on you. Because you know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to take it too far. Oh, I thought he was a threat. Yeah, you thought he was a threat, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, last night, Democratic presidential candidates clashed in a debate over the future of numerous things, like racial inequality was discussed, health care in America was discussed. Um, I don't recall reparations coming up. Um, but there was many issues caught up, in, including how to beat Donald Trump. You know, that's that was a big conversation. Like, who can build the coalition that can really beat Donald Trump? Because they seem to believe, and again, if you're a Democrat candidate, you care more about that than anything else. I get it. Miss Tiffany Rice, don't be, I think I read that. Uh, baseball, a sport that has the lowest African, lowest level of African-American athletes outside the National Hockey League. Imagine that. Is that right? Nobody's checking for baseball. You know why? Far too boring. It's boring. You can't dunk on nobody. There's no basketballs. Yeah. There's no, no fast breaks. Can't hang on the rim. I mean, what kind of game is this? What kind of game is this? Did you hear Chuck D? Chuck D blast Maury Povich and Jerry Springer for what he called exploiting blacks through outrageous shows. Now, here in Cincinnati area, Jerry uh, Jerry Springer, is, is he's some kind of a big deal. I know he's a big-time donor for the Democrats. They love him some Jerry Springer here locally. But does Public Enemy's legendary frontman Chuck D have a point? Do you have a point? 
I mean, most recently I was watching uh, the Roland Martin Daily Digital show, and he had on Byron Allen. And Roland Martin confronted Byron Allen with a question that I've asked both privately and publicly about Byron Allen. Oh, wow, you black all of a sudden? Now you care about black folks? Where you been? Seems awfully convenient. You know, awfully convenient. And uh, again, I'll say it again. To me, the blackest thing you can do is who you marry. Who you decide to couple up with, that's just me personally. You can take any way you want to. I don't know your your situation, but I'm speaking my truth. That's me. That is me. You may not agree with it, but so and what? That's how I feel. That is just me. I'm not holding it against his brother, but I'm just saying. So when he asked, uh, when Roland Martin put that question to Byron Allen, who's the CEO of Entertainment, um, is it Entertainment Studios or Unlimited or something like that? But anyway, um, he said... Uh, he started talking about his resume and he said, look, you know, right now I've got like four or five African-American judge type of shows. So judge this, Joe, that judge that black, I mean, female and male. And to him, that's a better representation. And he brought up Jerry Springer. You mean talking about your baby daddy shows and stuff like that. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many people here have never watched and have been entertained by the Maury Povich show? And he's doing those paternity tests. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have never been entertained it or you've never watched it whatsoever. And that's my point. A lot of people have watched it. A lot of people watch those shows. They find those shows to be entertaining. And there's a lot of things that are entertaining, like malt liquor. Don't mean it's good for you. I'll make a point. And I've I've, I've given up on this. I mean, uh, it's not that I've given up. I just accept it. You know... Um, I'm not a big drinker, but when I drink, I don't drink malt liquor. I would decide to spend my time drinking something that's a little bit better than malt liquor. When I was younger, 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 like when I first got the age to drink, you know, I used to drink malt liquor because it was cheap. I didn't know what the damn difference was. I thought alcohol was alcohol back then. I didn't know the damn difference. You know what I'm saying? My folks didn't really drink like that. So there's all, and they still sell malt liquor. If you go right now, you can get you like a 40 ounce for like a dollar and 25 cents. Now you, you got a 40 ounce of a liquid that somebody is selling for a dollar 25 cent. Now, how could it be good for you? I mean, if if you got some bottled water for a dollar and 25 cent, you already know you got some cheap water. So could you imagine this is non water, 40 ounces It cost a dollar 47 cent. You know that shit bad for you, but it's always going to be a market for malt liquor, and it's always going to be a market for malt liquor TV. Maury Povich, Jerry Springer, they have an unlimited market, an unlimited niche, because it's always going to be a market for those kind of shows. The reason why Jerry Springer's been been on TV for 25 years is because he is he's giving you malt liquor TV, and it's always going to be it's always going to be a uh, there's always going to be a huge market for malt liquor TV, always. You know, your baby daddy, you sleeping with my mama. I thought you was a man, you're really a woman, or vice versa. Oh, you find out he's transgender, but you still want to get married. You know, all this kind of stuff. There's always going to be a market for that. Mason Muller writes, malt liquor, that's so 1986, 1990s for me. Me too. A little later than that, like mid to late 90s, but me too. Me too, but I'm saying, if you go to your convenience store right now, you're going to find nothing. You're going to say all kind of malt liquor. Four loco, I put malt liquor. That's the same thing. Yeah, four loco. Why would you even drink something called four loco? Because they like it. Because it makes them feel a certain way. Same reason why people watch Moy Povich, because they like it. It makes them feel a certain way. So does he have a point? Does Chuck D have a point that somehow it's Jerry Springer's fault? Uh, this is Chuck D on his Twitter page to start this whole conversation. He wrote, uh, just how must the feds pay these old white dudes like Maury and Jerry Showtime and young folks, dysfunctional shit on air, especially young blacks. Beware of elder media, new COINTEL pro buzzards hovering. Everything ain't entertainment. In fact, it's exploitation. Huh, that's a new term. New COINTEL pro. Of course, we know COINTEL pro was the um, FBI's um, uh, a plan to... <laughs> to uh, observe, analyze, classify, 
um, monitor, surveil what they thought were menaces to American society, most notably black nationalists. And it just wasn't in the political world. People like Lou Alcindor um, and others, uh, Jim Brown, Muhammad Ali, and others found themselves um, comics. A lot of folks found themselves under COINTELPRO, which, by the way, never stopped, by the way. We know that. COINTELPRO never stopped. They said it stopped. It never stopped. It just um, went through a metamorphosis uh, during times of war. The anti-war community uh, was succumbed to the same tactics post the civil rights era of the 60s by the same, you know, so-called law, enforce, law enforcement uh, agency. Same thing. The same tactics. They infiltrate, analyze, they tag you. Same thing happened. I'm talking about recently. I'm talking about during the war on terror, it happened. When, when we were at war, war, you know, because we're not at war, war anymore like we were before. War in Iraq, Pakistan, and around the world. You had anti-protesters that were being infiltrated, and the government was using Cointel Pro tactics on them. So those tactics never go away. Some have suggested that it even goes deeper into entertainment. Some people say that people like Kurt Cobain and 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 Tupac Shakur and others um, were victims of Cointel Pro. In fact, what does that even mean in the age of the digital world, Cointel Pro? Because now with your phone, everybody's being targeted. If you got a cell phone, your cell phone uh, company knows everything about you. They know what you like to do. They know if you like, you like, you do something kinky online, you go to kinky websites, they know all the kinky websites. They know what you like to eat. You know what I'm saying? They know where you like to shop. They know when you shop. They know when you're at home. They know when you're not at home. I mean, it's just a different world. And you say Snowden, it's a different world. Let me see. So are black people who appear in the Maury Povich show being used as pawns? Well, yes and no. I mean, th- there's an exploitative sort of tone whenever you go on a show of that nature. Like if somebody calls you and say, hey, Mur-, as a matter of fact, Maury Povich isn't calling anybody. They don't call people. You know, what they do is they put the number up and people call them and say, look, I've been cheating on my wife and I don't know how to tell her. Can I come on your show and tell her? Sure. And, you know, for them, it's like a vacation. They get to go to wherever they're taping. They, they, they get put up in a hotel for whatever the duration is. You're on TV. And we live in a world where you can go on Maury Povich and say something that becomes like a hashtag. Boom. I mean, you know, cash me outside. This, this young white chick went on, uh, was that Dr. Phil said, cash me outside. It becomes internet means for two years. Now she's got a record career, getting millions of hits on YouTube. So I, I hear what Chuck D is saying, but these, these folks are going on there hoping they can become an, an uh, internet sensation. And it might happen. It's a long shot, but it, it might happen. You want to go on Murray and, I had a baby with my best friend's man and all this kind of stuff. You know, people like that kind of drama. Stop lying. Makes you feel good about your life. Well, yeah, my issue's messed up, but at least I ain't doing that. Don't be a hypocrite, man. At some point in your life, you watch Jerry. And, you know, at some point, I've watched Jerry like, oh, this is just completely made up. You know what I'm saying? Jerry was of my generation. Jerry, Jerry. Jerry, come on now. They call it Ratchet TV for a reason because we know it's Ratchet. That's why we're watching it. Mr. All High and Mighty over here, Chuck D. Go make a new album, man. You know what I'm saying? Can we get Night of the Living Bass Head 2, please, while you're here talking about Maury? I want some of that classic music back. <laughs> My job does the testing for Maury. It's hilarious. Is that right? I ain't mad at Maury. I'm not mad at all because I understand it's all entertainment and people are choosing themselves. Those people ain't being exploited. They're exploiting themselves. It's just like saying that a stripper is being exploited by the person that owns the strip club. You ain't being exploited. You're doing this because you want to do it. You're getting something out of it. These people that go on more, are getting something out of it. Number one, they're getting the opportunity to become an internet superstar. They might go in there and become a new GIF. Billions of people 
uh, re, 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 retweeting the gif that they're on or become a new meme. Now, that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't want to be no damn gif. I don't want to be a meme. But there's people out there that do want that, man. Andy Warhol, he once said that everybody will get their 15 minutes of fame. And some people getting like 17, 18 minutes, way too much. Uh, Clue Magic writes, baseball isn't boring, it's just slow. But going to an actual game is better than watching on TV. Clue, I agree with you. Going to an actual game is better. I do. En- I have enjoyed going to games, especially when I'm with good company. Um, you just kind of sit back and just enjoy it. You're right, you're right. I agree with you. Watching it on TV, especially when you got a losing franchise like the week do with the Red- Reds, is unbearable. It's unbearable. I can't do it. I stand corrected. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Larry is what? Jay-Z NFL spook who sat by the door, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But back to this. Uh, black people are not being exploiting. They're not being exploited by Maury. They're exploiting themselves to get on, by, on the Maury Povich show. They could just the will act a fool and get caught up on video like we see with these Popeye, uh, uh, you know, fights. Same thing. New Cointel Pro, buzzards hovering, everything ain't entertainment, but in fact, it's ex- exploitation. Is that right? Okay. All right. I mean, I, I get what he's saying. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. I've got no problem. You want to go on Maury, you want to, you know, confront your little sister who slept with your, your baby daddy and all this kind of stuff, and then you sleeping with his best friend, and you don't know who the baby is. <laughs> It's stories. You know, back in the day, people, I don't even know these things still come on, but during the day, they used to have these things called soap operas. And the soap operas had the most ridiculous storylines. And the storylines were very, very similar in terms of the outrageousness as what you see on Maury Povich. It was all about who's sleeping with who, who's cheating on who, whose baby is it, who's stabbing who in the back. It's the same things. It's the same exact things. And the reason why is because humans like that kind of entertainment. You might not like it. I might not like it. I'm lying. You you may not like it, but there's millions of people out there that's going to love them some Jerry. They ain't turning it off. They're going to love them some Maury. It's the same reason why people watch Iyanla Van Zandt. People don't watch that show because they're going to get to a happy ending. They watch that show for the drama. They want to hear all that drama. They want Iyanla to get with him. Oh, oh, she getting loud, Iyanla? You're going to have to check her in that special way you know how to check people, right? That's why people turn into that show. It's no different. It's no different. It ain't no different. And that's just one and two TV shows. Man, nowadays, there's no excuse to watch exactly what you want when you want to. It's called Fire Stick. It's called the Internet. It's called streaming sites. Man, you know, people are watching that not because they're captivated like it used to be. It used to be you had no choice. It's like, damn, this is the most drama-filled thing I can get right now. Now with the internet and YouTube, you got drama if you're looking for it at your fingertips 24-7. 24-7, it's a different world. But listen, I could go on and on and on, and I'm not going to do that. I've got to make a move this morning. I want you to have an excellent day. Have an excellent day. We'll be back with you tomorrow at 1230. It's the, it's the Is It Just Me podcast with Donnie B. Yeah, what's up with Byron Allen? Hmm? What would really, if he loses his case with Comcast and Charter, what does that mean? Will it be a real impact on black businesses the way it's been said? I don't know. We'll talk about it, though. Have an excellent day, Choppers. Viva La Chapas, and we'll talk real soon. I'm Nathan Ivey, and I'm out.